Hi everyone, Dr. Campbell here, and today we're going to take a look at section two of our ICD-10 CM guidelines, which focuses on the selection of the principal diagnoses. One of the things that you'll want to note is that the circumstances of the inpatient admission is always going to govern the selection of the principal diagnoses. The Uniform Hospital Discharge data set actually defines the principal diagnoses as the condition that's established after study to be chiefly responsible for occasioning the admission of the patient to the hospital for care. I personally remember the words after study. In determining the principal diagnoses, your coding conventions, which are actually in section one of your guidelines, and the tabular list and the alphabetical index actually take precedence over these guidelines. There are several circumstances that you'll want to consider in selecting your principal diagnoses. So let's take a look at them. First up is related to situations where you have signs and symptoms. Signs and symptoms are not to be used as a principal diagnosis when a related definitive diagnosis has been established. So think about someone that has chest pain and the doctor definitively says that the patient has a heart attack. So we would not code the chest pain, we would just code the myocardial infarction. Another guideline is a situation when there are two or more interrelated conditions that are actually each meeting the definition of principal diagnosis. And when we say interrelated, what we mean is diseases in the same ICD-10 CM chapter or manifestations that are characteristically associated with a certain disease. In those particular situations, either condition may be sequenced first unless the circumstances of the admission or the therapy that's provided, the tabular list, or the alphabetical index tell us otherwise. Next up, Situations where two or more diagnoses equally meet the definition for principle. So notice how that's different than the previous guideline. The previous guideline talked about two or more conditions that are interrelated. Here, we're talking about two or more diagnoses that equally meet the definition. Now, this is an, in, an unusual instance um, that two or more diagnoses equally meet the definition of principal diagnoses, the guidelines state that either of these diagnoses may be sequenced first. And you also want to consider whether or not the alphabetical index or the tabular list or other guidelines in our code set um, it's, is not giving us any other options. All right, next up we have two or more comparative or contrasting diagnoses. And here you're going to see where the provider is saying something like either or this condition. They are coded as if they are confirmed and we're going to sequence our diagnosis. And when we say sequence, which one goes first, according to the circumstances of the admission. Next up, Situations where the original treatment plan is not carried out. So let's say a patient comes in today because they're going to have a cholecystectomy because they have cholelithiasis or cholecystitis. And the procedure or the treatment wasn't done. Coding guidelines tells us that even though the treatment was not carried out due to some type of unforeseen circumstances, the reason that they were there for the surgery is sequence first. Of note, there is a status code, which is a Z code, that can indicate procedure not done due to whatever that particular circumstance was. All right, next up, complications of surgery and other medical care. So if the admission 
is for treatment of a complication from surgery or other medical care, the complication code is going to be sequenced as the principal. Of note, if the classification is, uh, the complication is gonna be classified to T80 through T88 series of codes, and the code book does not give us the necessary specificity in describing the complication, an additional code for the complication can actually be assigned. Next up, we have uncertain diagnoses. Here, we're talking about when the provider at the time of discharge says probable, suspected, likely, questionable, uh, probable, possible, still to be ruled out, or other terms that indicate uncertainty, you're gonna code the condition as if it existed or was established. Now, the basis for these guidelines are the fact that there was diagnostic workup that took place, um, arrangements for further workup or observation, and initial therapeutic approach that would correspond most closely with an established diagnosis. Of note, this guideline only applies to inpatient admissions to short-term acute long-term care and psychiatric hospitals. All right, next up, we're gonna look at observation from, or admission, I should say, from an observation unit. So we have two guidelines to consider here. So first, when a patient is admitted to observation for a medical condition, which either worsens or does not improve, and then they're subsequently converted to inpatient status in the same hospital for the same condition, the principal diagnoses would be that medical condition that actually led to the hospital admission. Now, situations for observation following a post-op observation um, so if a patient is admitted to OBS and uh, to monitor them um, or for a condition or a complication that develops following outpatient surgery and then they're subsequently admitted as an inpatient of the same hospitals, we're going to apply the definition of principal diagnosis, which again is what? The condition established after study to be chiefly responsible for occasioning the admission of the patient to the hospital. All right, next up, we're going to look at admission from outpatient surgery. So when the patient is outpatient, so they're receiving surgery in the outpatient surgery department, and then they're subsequently admitted for continuing inpatient care at the same hospital, there are essentially three different um, considerations that we need to make. So number one, we're talking about if there's a complication. So if the admission, inpatient admission, is for the complication, the complication is gonna be sequenced as principal. If there is no complication or other condition that is documented as the reason for the surgery or reason for the admission, you're gonna assign the outpatient surgery condition as the principal diagnosis, so the reason that they were having that outpatient surgery. And lastly, if the patient is admitted uh, for a condition that's unrelated to the surgery, then you're going to assign the condition uh, that's unrelated as principal. You always want to remember that codes paint the picture of the care that is provided today, and we want the insurance company to know why that patient was admitted. All right, lastly, we're going to look at admissions and encounters for rehab. So in those situations, when the sole purpose is for um, rehab, you're gonna sequence first the code for the condition for which the service is being performed. Now, if the condition for rehab um, that's being provided is no longer present, then we're going to report the appropriate aftercare codes as the first listed or principal. Now, when you hear first listed, you can think outpatient. So it's gonna be listed as principal unless rehab service is provided following an injury. Now, for rehab services following active treatment of an injury, you're gonna assign the injury code with the appropriate seventh character to identify that this is a subsequent encounter. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening. And next up, we will take a look at 
section three of our guidelines, which focuses on reporting additional diagnoses, but these are additional diagnoses for inpatient care. Bye-bye now.